Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. Today, I have a special guest with me. You guys have probably recognized him by now because he's in a lot of my videos. My friend, Ivan LaCroix. Ivan, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Glad to have you. So he uh, came back from a uh, trip in the USA recently. And uh, well, if you guys don't know, Ivan and his partner, Nick McGurk, a professional detailer from the USA, they decided to start their own line of detailing products. And today I'm lucky enough that he brought the entire line and we're gonna be going through uh, all of these products, what they are, what they do. You're gonna see a few of them demonstrated as well, but we're getting it from the horse's mouth with all the tips and tricks. Uh, so I'll be curious, Ivan, of course, yeah. to hear about your line, but, for the Pan the Organizer viewers and subscribers, he was kind enough to offer you guys a 10% discount on your purchase. So by the way, I'll leave the links to all of these products in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Also, quick disclaimer, this is not a paid review. It's not a sponsored video. So Ivan was just kind enough to bring them over and I thought, let's film a video because I was very intrigued by this lineup, which is called DIY Detail, by the way. So Ivan, if you just want to give us a bit of background first of all uh, of you and your partner why you started the brand and then let's go over this lineup because there's some good stuff in there so yeah take it away well it was started actually about two years ago and not as DIY detail I was hired by a company to help in developing their products uh, I do that with a lot of companies this isn't the only one but nonetheless uh, in the beginning they once we'd figure out the basics of the line and what we're aiming at and what we're aiming at is to make detailing fun again you know, we used to be, when Pan and I were younger, uh, and he's younger than I am, but you know, when I was a kid, we'd ride with our bicycles down the street and see the, the fathers out there normally, you know, not being sexist, but this is back in the 70s, uh, out there washing their cars in the driveway and having fun doing it. We don't see that anymore. That's I asked true. Pan when I got here, yep. when's the last time he saw someone other than himself in this neighborhood washing a car? No. Never. And I'm sure a lot of you, you viewers can relate out there when you're washing your cars, right? In your driver, your garage, uh, on your streets, because we're crazy about car washing in this on this channel. Yeah. Well, you're probably the only ones on your street that enjoy that or do that, right? So right. Uh, yeah, you're, you're totally right, Ivan. So we try, we're trying to bring that back. And Nick got involved because the company in question, and we're not gonna name the company because they're a big chemical manufacturer, but they don't sell anything under their own name. Really weird, but they make a lot of the chemicals you know and love already. That being said, they wanted a spokesperson, and I thought of Nick McGurk. Nick, great young guy, enthusiastic, good detailer, and in his daytime career, wasn't quite satisfied with what he was doing, so I thought, hey, this would be a great opportunity for him. They brought him on and then they still came back to me and said, well, we'd like to have you as well. So we we're both offered a share in the company. So we are officially owners of the company as well. And uh, here's the program. Here's the what we came up with. And you've been in the detailing industry for like for over 40 years now, I think. A little something. over Some 40 years, yeah. Like that, that, that's older than I am, right? Almost, yeah. I'm 41. So he's been in there for a while and yeah. I know you wouldn't put your name on products if you if they did not uh, represent good value, but also good performance, right? Exactly. So even though I think these are for, well, you meant it for DIYers out there, they're all ready to use formula. So nothing, no complicated, no dilution ratios, no calculations, you just use them. What it says on the label, you basically basically uh, use it for that purpose and you enjoy doing it. Yep. But that being said, uh, professionals can even use this if they want, right? Well, professionals could use it for sure. Right now, we only have 16 ounce formats. The more popular chemicals will be offering gallon size as well a little okay. later on. Like you said, the focus is really having fun in your driveway, in your garage, cleaning your car, making cleaning your car not a chore anymore, but something you want to do. Like I tell my viewers, go out there and enjoy washing and detailing your vehicle. Exactly. Uh, one thing I noticed before we start talking about the individual products is on the back, there's this QR code that you guys can scan with your mobile devices and it brings you to a web page right. where they have the SDS sheet. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of brands do that. You guys can actually access their SDS. Uh, you can actually also see the product in use. So basically it links to your YouTube channel because DIY right. Detail has their own channel now. Yes. So they can see these products in action and how to use them because a lot of people, well, like myself, are visual and we enjoy watching the stuff before we actually use the products. And uh, what else is on the um, that website? Oh, they can purchase, obviously, the right. products directly exactly. if they want to replenish their line. Yeah. So the labels are well done. There's this nice matte appearance. The logo is very nice, very modern. So I like that. But uh, okay, 
Enough said by me, Ivan. Bring us through the lineup. Let's start maybe with the uh, shampoo over there. So just basically say the name, what it is, what basically the formulation is behind, and we'll overlay some graphics or some visuals with B-roll so you guys can see a, a few of these products in use. Yeah, so this is Incredible Suds. And those that know me know I'm not a big fan of soap. <laughs> and in There's order- a rinseless wash guy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But in order to have a soap in our line and one that I'm willing to put my name on, I didn't want just another soap. And the name Incredible Suds is because pretty much whatever the dilution ratio you use, you're going to get a lot of suds. The other aspect that I wanted was a soap that actually cleans. Not just makes bubbles and is cute and pretty, but a soap that actually takes the dirt off the car. That actually does what it's wanting to do. So instead of using, uh, let's say, cheap ways of getting suds, we actually have the highest load of surfactants in this soap that the blenders have ever seen. Okay. So this is actually one of our more expensive products to produce and also one of our most expensive products in the line. But What's the official scent, by the way, also? Because all their products, they, they, they smell good in this one. It's no, it smells like chemical blueberries, I'd say. Blueberries, yeah, something, something like, like that. that yeah. yeah, Very, very good smell. Uh, sort of a fruity, blueberry-ish grape, maybe. Uh, but very fun to use, great lubrication, no fillers, just soap. And so, the funny thing, you told me a story before about it, is that I think you're going to have to change the instructions on it because you yes. were recommending uh, a bit too much ounces and it produces so much shampoo and foam that they're going to have to actually reduce the quantity you're putting in. Yeah. So what is the actual recommendation for a bucket, let's say, for the bucket wash? So for a bucket, one or two ounces. Okay. And for your foam cannon, one ounce. One ounce is enough, yeah. Because if you follow one to the 32. four to five ounces, you'll be foaming way too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so that's, that's the shampoo. It's a pure shampoo, right? No protection in it? No protection at all. Okay. It's not going to strip. It's pH balanced. It's uh, okay. close to eight. So a little on the caustic Alkaline side, side yeah. yeah, but not. So safe for waxes, paint sealants, ceramic coatings, regardless. Safe for anything. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, well, Ivan is the rinseless guy, right? You used to be vice president of Optimum Polymer Technologies. Correct, yeah. So O&R is a thing that you knew very well. Yeah. So I'm guessing that this rinseless wash is a good one. Exactly. So What's again, it called? It's rinseless wash. Love it. It's, See how simple that is? It's... If you can't tell how to use it by the name, we have a problem. Let us know, we'll change the name. But nonetheless, so rinseless wash, uh, no protection in it as well. It's a pure rinseless. What is a little different than most rinseless on the market? A lot of rinseless use a polymer, which is great. This uses polymers as well, but it also has surfactants in it. Okay. So something that was asked of a lot of other brands was, can we have a rinseless that foams? And a lot of them, there are some out there that foam, but they're basically just soap. Uh, whereas this is a true polymer rinseless, but with added surfactants to get it to foam. Now, it's not going to foam like Incredible Suds, but it is going to leave, leave a little foam that you can see where you're working with. So it's a great way of pre-soaking the car. Again, 256 to 1. But a good way of pre-soaking it to get it on there, to get it agitating, get it working, and then go do your contact wash. So you could put it, let's say, in a uh, in a spray bottle, 250, 256 to 1 dilution ratio, meaning half an ounce to every gallon of water, right? Right, or 4 so, milliliters to a liter. So 4 milliliters to a liter for those who are on that metric. And then you would pre-spray your vehicle, let that work and do the encapsulating of the dirt first. Yeah. And then you take your wash media and your bucket with a grit guard, hopefully, in the bottom to keep yes. that dirt uh, localized at the bottom of the pail. Yeah. And uh, basically just go ahead and use it as a traditional rinseless wash would. Exactly. So that's perfect for anybody who are still wondering what is a rinseless wash compared to the traditional wash with your buckets, shampoo, and your mitts. Uh, basically, this it re requires a lot less water. But rinseless doesn't mean, Ivan, that you never rinse, right? No, some no, people, no, no. If there's a, like a layer of thick mud on your vehicle, you can pre-rinse the vehicle with yeah. a pressure washer so if you want. So rinseless doesn't mean you don't rinse the car. Rinseless means after you've applied the product, there's no need to rinse again. So that's so, when your towel drying and it acts as a lubricant on the surface as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. So it's acting basically like your... Um, if you don't need or you don't want to use a drying aid, you don't have to with a rinseless. With a soap, we always want to use a drying aid. And it sh you know, they should really be termed drying lubricants. Yes. But nonetheless. You're lubricating it acts as a buffer between your towel and the surface. Obviously, less chances of marring yeah. or micro marring the surface when you're, you're drying the vehicle. And I think rinseless washes are good um, alternatives for people who don't have easy access to free flowing water. Uh, you live in cities that might have heavy water bans or heavy water restrictions. Or as a professional, you're trying to reduce the quantity of water that you're using. Those are perfect, right? Right. And also as a professional, you're trying to save time. 
Yeah. Uh, and it saves a lot of time over a regular soap and water wash. And for all of those who are scared, like, oh, rinseless wash is going to scratch the surface. It's going to leave some, and I understand the fear out there because we've been used for so long, that traditional uh, wash method. What would you say to those people who are, who are scared? Like, does a rinseless wash scratch the surface? No, it doesn't. No more than a soap scratches the surface. It's not the product that causes the problems, it's the person using the product that causes problems. So if you have a poor wash technique, no matter what you're using, you're still gonna scratch your car. And if you have a great wash, wash technique, you're not gonna scratch your car. And I have a rinseless wash tutorial on my channel, by the way, if you guys, yep. a few of them now, if you uh, wanna check that out. And uh, well, it was inspired greatly by the man himself for the rinseless wash technique, so uh, Ivan. And uh, yeah, if you do it safely and you know what you're doing, you follow the directions and you do it correctly, there should be no problems. So uh, by the way, the smell of that one too, I think it smells something like apples. Is green apples. Another green apples, yeah I, yeah. I just love the scent. Yeah. So why not uh, increase your enjoyability when you're detailing, but having good smelling products as well. So what's the next one, uh, Ivan? Next is tree sap remover. Oh. Now, that's something that not a lot of people have in their lines. Uh, the reason we had this is because we get a lot of questions. Yeah. And those, how do I remove the tree sap? Well, this is how you remove it. It's more aimed at deciduous as opposed to coniferous. So in other words, a maple, an oak, as opposed to a you know a spruce or a pine, because those are easier to remove. Right? They're easier the to tree remove. And pines, yeah. yeah, it's the 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 other ones from maples and other kinds of trees that are goopier and harder to remove. Yeah, and you typically use like alcohol or goo gone or there's so many different products, but those can sometimes affect the protection that's underneath, right? Exactly, they'll affect the protection, and especially if you're using IPA or alcohol, it's very dry and it damages. You risk scratching the paint. So this provides lubrication as well as removing. So spray on let it sit, maybe agitate with your wash media and a soap or the rinseless, then rinse it away. And is this uh, safe on ceramic coatings and graphene coatings? Yeah, safe on ceramic coatings, safe on glass, safe on rubber, on trim, any surface of the vehicle. So any exterior surface. Right, and this one you don't want to smell because it doesn't really smell that good. <laughs> yeah, there are for some chemicals, uh, like the iron removers, for example, there's no choice, the TGA or some of the active ingredients in there, uh, they, they have that rotten egg smell or yeah. they smell chemically, but you need the power of the chemical, right? Right. And talking about the TGA, you have the iron remover that's next. Right. So the iron remover, like any other iron remover on the market, spray it on, let it dwell. You'll see the nice little red streaks, hose it off. It needs to be rinsed. So just, we'll add that in there. Don't let it dry on the surface? It can dry on the surface. If oh, it dries on the matter. surface, okay. as soon as you re-wet it, it's gone. And so the chemical reaction Ivan is talking about is when you're spraying it on, when it reacts with the brake dust, the industrial fallout, basically the ferrous metals, it's going to turn to a purple or reddish tint, indicating that there's that chemical reaction going uh, to be able to basically make the molecules or the um, the ferrous metals that if you look under a microscope, they have those jagged edges. But these kinds of chemicals, they round off those edges, right? It's not that they're melting the no. iron. So they're rounding off the edges, making them more soluble and freer to rinse off when you're rinsing them off the body. And so you're removing those uh, little rust spots that you see on the car, which often come from the brake dust, right? Exactly. And that could be very... Um, uh, it's very corrosive on the finish and if left unattended, well, it's not good. Yeah. Is this safe on ceramic coatings again, graphene coatings? Safe on coatings, safe on waxes. Okay. It's uh, pH neutral, so it's not going to damage any wax or sealant and it's going to help keep your car looking better. And you're a person, well, Ivan loves efficiency. So there's some times where you can combine decontamination steps. For example, an iron remover and a clay bar or clay towel. Not all iron removers and not all clay media can be combined. But in this no. case, Ivan, I think you have something. Yeah, so we have the uh, DIY clay towel and it's a diamond weave. So you have the perforated clay on one side yeah. and a diamond weave microfiber on the other side, right? Exactly. Okay. And what this does, uh, basically you'll fold it in four. Some people like to use mitts. I'm a towel person. Uh, we Me too. Yeah, we fold it in four. And when you fold it in four, it gives you a nice thickness. So you're not putting any pressure, pressure spots. And at the same time, you're going to be soaking this either in your soap bucket or in your rinseless bucket. Now you have lubrication on the towel as well. The iron remover provides lubrication. This provides lubrication and if you do happen to have a pressure point, the perforated clay is actually going to let the moisture out of the towel onto the surface, providing more safety. Yep. And a lot of people out there, and start writing your comments now, but you can't clay a car without polishing it afterwards. Well, actually, you can. Uh, using safe techniques, perforated clay as opposed to a clay bar yeah. or a solid uh, clay surface material, 
the iron remover or a good soap or good rinseless as a lubricant you can safely clay a car without damaging it. And, they, and you guys can always watch, right? Look at your results afterwards when you're done cleaning, rinse the vehicle over, uh, perhaps dry it if you want to, have a look at the paint. If there's no marring or no uh, visual scratches that were induced during the clay stage, you can decide to skip the, uh, the machine polishing unless you have previous protection that you want to remove before you apply a coating in a glass bottle because those need to bond to direct clear coat. Uh, but if, you, if the customer is just paying for a clay and seal, you're done claying, there's no uh, micro marring or things that you can visualize see you can skip the polishing stage and go to the protection it's yeah. all about communication what the product what the customer is paying for or what you want as an end result exactly and if you're doing it at home again the clay towel the less pressure you use the better it is think of it as an adolescent if you ask the adolescent kindly to please clean up their room you might get something out of them if you yell at them to clean the room up you're guaranteed they're not going to clean their room up. So the clay towel is the same thing. The less pressure you put on it, the better it's going to work. And so this clay towel, they can get on the DIY detailed yes. website too, right? So you yeah. guys offer this? That's good. And again, not all iron removers, guys, can be used as clay lubricants. No. And not all clay media can be used as clay lubricants. So Ivan has done the mm -hmm. testing with Nick as well. Yep. And the, this combination works well. All right. So the next one. This is one that the name is actually a little wrong but we left it there because that's what people understand and water spot remover now water spots chemically generally you're not removing them you're removing the minerals that cause the appearance of the water spot and that's what this is doing so it's a spray on lightly agitate if you want rinse off if you have really bad water spotting in other words you parked beside a sprinkler for two days in the sun this isn't going to help you but it is going to remove the minerals that when you start polishing, then they're not going to be driven deeper into the clear coat to just come back. So what people need to know is when you have water droplets on your vehicle, uh, if you to see them in, a, in the magnifying glass, because that's basically what they are under the beating sun, when that water evaporates, it leaves behind minerals that are contained in the water. So those minerals, if they are left unattended and often after a few hours in the baking sun, already the damage has started, they can start etching through that clear coat. They're usually acidic in nature, those water spots, and you need a chemical to be able to remove the minerals before you go ahead and machine polish. So once you're done removing those minerals, if you still have some etching left, that was the damage done to the clear coat, that's when you'd machine polish those off and sometimes if they're super deep and they've been there for like a year baking in the sun yeah. well sometimes only water sanding or perhaps panel respraying re at one point if the damage is, is that bad right yeah. so this water spot remover is it again is it safe on waxes ceramic coatings Sa all that? safe on everything it is acidic uh, like most water spot removers yeah. so yes it is going to slightly if you have a wax it's going to slightly damage it but little note if you have a wax you probably never have an issue with water spots yeah a wax, a true carnauba wax will actually absorb those minerals into it and then as the wax is degrading, they'll just go away. Yeah, water spots are more prone on ceramic coatings or graphene coatings because of the nature of the uh, the protection that's on there. The, hence why we often apply toppers on top to help alleviate or reduce some of that water spotting issues. So regular maintenance is key. Uh, but with the water spot remover, Ivan, when you're done uh, using it, you would spray on the surface, let it dwell, rinse off? Exactly. Do you need to wash the car after the water spot remover? No. So you can move on to your next step. Exactly. So well, if it's properly chemical, rinsed, you're good. No problem. So yeah. that's all part of chemical decontamination right guys so it's not always that you have to go through mechanical decontamination with a clay towel and a clay bar only do that when the paint actually needs it uh, but chemical decon you could do that every other month or when you see issues like tar deposits like tree set deposit like iron uh, particles that is in your paint so observe your paint and use the appropriate product yep so what do we have next all next clean? is all clean what's that all-purpose cleaner so uh, an APC not a degreaser though so yes it is going to remove grease but a lot of detailers mistakenly use a degreaser yeah. as an APC. Yes. And that causes a lot of problems. Uh, this is a true all purpose cleaner, great product, pre diluted. Now, it's pre diluted to do wheels, engine bays, exterior items. If you're going to be using it on an interior, I'd cut it once again. So, one to one, 50 50 mixed yeah. with water? One okay. to one or even two to one, depending on how dirty the interior is. Okay. But for exterior use, it's ready to use. Again, paint safe, plastic safe, uh, anything that is caustic, you don't want close to your glass. So if you do spray some on the windows, 
Not a concern. Just get it off there sooner than later. Okay. Don't let it dry on the, the surface. And also, if you're using this on the interior, uh, a lot of people forget the uh, the next step is when you're using an all-purpose cleaner, if you don't want any residue left behind, you have to follow up with a damp towel with just water, right? Yeah. To wipe off and neutralize the, the cleaner itself. Yeah, water or rinsels. And another little pro tip, do not spray this inside your car. Mm -hmm. If you're spraying, you spray onto a towel, then apply a towel onto surface. Yes. Not spraying this directly on the door panel or on the seat. You're not going to have a good day when you do that. Absolutely. So now that we have a clean surface, we're going to move on uh, to the paint because we de did some washing and decontamination. So before you apply a ceramic coating uh, or a graphene coating, we often, well, it's probably a must at this point, yes. you need some sort of an IPA or isopropyl alcohol mix to remove polishing oils and residue. And you guys have something. Yeah. So this is an IPA solvent mix. And it's called... Panel prep. Panel prep. Look at that simplicity. I love yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm not one for complicated things. So nonetheless, so panel prep is going to provide good lubrication and it's also going to provide the cleaning that you need for your panel. So uh, basically, again, this is going to remove the polishing oils and it's going to leave that surface squeaky, squeaky clean. Yes. So that way you get a better bonding of the protection right. on top. Can people use an IPA even if somebody just wants to apply a wax or a paint sealant? It can still be a good idea, right? To use you an can, IPA? yeah. It's going to make your wax or paint sealant last longer because you're getting a better bond to the paint. So for op optimal uh, durability on your protection products, the more time you spend prepping the paint, that's the longest and hardest part. But the better you prep your paint beforehand, the better the product is going to perform, the longer it's going to last, and obviously the vehicle is going to look a lot better. So put time and effort into the prepping. So now we prep the panel and protection, and one of my favorite forms of paint protection, of course, is a ceramic coating. And you guys have, what's it called? Ceramic coating. What a surprise. <laughs> yeah. So the... Uh... Uh, DIY tech ceramic coating. We gave it a little name, the DIY tech. But anyways, so the ceramic coating is a good SiO2 coating. Very simple to apply. This is meant for the DIY. It's not meant for the overcomplicated OCD detailer that wants to do 25 steps in order when they could be just doing one. Yeah. This is that one step one layer, you can layer it if you wish, but it's not necessary. So it's not gonna give necessarily more years of protection? It's gonna give a little bit more, okay. but not not substantially. So how would you apply this on the surface? Is it like the traditional ceramic coatings? Make sure that it's clean, make sure you're wearing gloves, and from there, you apply it. I like a circular motion, you can do cross hatches, you can do triangles, you can do octagons if you want. <laughs> Basically, get it on the surface. Ensure proper coverage. Ensure proper coverage. And then from there, when it starts to evaporate or flash off, the solvents in it will flash. It'll give a sort of a rainbowy look to the surface. Like an oil slick on water look. Yeah, the oil slick on water. Once the oil slick on water has gone away, about 50 to 70%, then you take a nice short nap microfiber towel, level it off. Because you're not trying to remove the coating, you're trying to level the high spots. Yeah. We level the high spots, we're good to go. If you happen to have missed a high spot, it happens. Uh, what you do then is simply try wiping it off. Within the first half hour or so, it will simply level off. From there, if it hasn't, if you've gone a little too long, take your applicator, put a little more coating on it. That will dissolve the coating underneath it and you'll be able to level it off. So they're going to get the hydrophobic properties, the UV protection, the gloss, the slickness, the chemical resistance, all the stuff that we expect from coating. Everything that we want from a coating is here. And it's easy to apply. One layer. That, that's one thing that I wish a lot of companies follow up with. And, and they're doing it. There are a lot of brands now that instead of a two, three, four plus layer system, they understood that they have to get the technology to a point where it's simple to apply one layer. Yeah. Uh, is there any curing time for this uh, coating before they expose the vehicle to water or rain? We'd like to say eight hours. Okay. That's a nice, safe time. Uh, if you're not expecting rain, yeah, you can immediately go out and get an ice cream. It's not a problem. Uh, if you're expecting rain, if you can keep it covered, great. If not, if it's had an hour, you're generally okay. But eight hours would be a good... A nice, and yeah, if, overnight. And if, and if they can and they, and they don't have to go anywhere, if you keep it 24 hours indoors... Oh, it's not going to not gonna hurt anything. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, what are we looking at? I know like durability is always a question of... Uh, many factors, maintenance, the conditions you live in, is the vehicle daily driven or just driven in the weekends, uh, how well you take care of it, and there's so many different variables, but what can they expect as far as, let's say, the claimed on paper durability? Are we talking about a six month coating? Or two how? to three years. Two to three years. It's okay. a nice safe number. Uh, if you're into detailing, you follow this guy, you listen to what he says, it might last 10 years. 
Uh, but that being said, ma maintenance, well, prep is one thing and maintenance is key. And if you're maintaining your coated vehicle properly, great. And one thing I like to dispel a myth. Yeah. People think that now my car is coated, I need to take care of it in a special way. No, the coating is actually providing much more protection than anything else you could put on your vehicle. So if you have a coated vehicle, not saying to abuse it, but saying that you don't need to have special things because it's coated. Uh, and yes, if you occasionally go through a car wash, you're not going to die. The car isn't going to magically disappear on you. It's still not a bad thing. Uh, if you can find a touchless car wash, even better. Yeah, because mechanical abrasion really is what wears down coatings, exactly. right? Mechanical washing or especially those brush rollers, try yeah. to avoid those at all costs. Right. Like I often say in, in the automatic car washes. Um, but so what kind of maintenance would you recommend then at that point? If, so, they, if they want to maintain the coating? Wash it yourself. Have fun washing it. And when you're done washing, you can apply one of two products. One is called Quick Beads and the other one is called Ceramic Gloss. So let's go ahead and talk about Quick Beads. So Quick Beads... Uh, this is actually, as far as I'm concerned, my most fun product in the line. It can be applied a couple different ways, actually three different ways. First of all, if you're watching this channel, you're probably a fan of the foam cannon. And we know this guy likes foam cannon as well. So you can actually put this in your foam cannon and apply it to the car once you've washed it to get it on the vehicle and then hose it off. So it's a water activated protectant. So spray on, rinse off. Yeah. yeah. Contains graphene oxide. Okay. So we're not calling it graphene on the label, but yes, it contains graphene oxide and you can see it in the bottom here. Yeah, let me let me show the, the guys here if we can focus in. There you go. Yeah. See a bit of that black stuff there. So mix before using. Uh, but the general way of applying this is get your car wet, wash it. While it's still wet, spray this on, give it 30 seconds or so, hose it off, and it'll make your drying a lot faster, a lot easier. Now, if you're using it with a rinse wash or you like the idea of a drying aid because it is a drying aid when you apply it with the wet way. Okay. You don't need to use an additional drying aid. It's providing that lubrication on the surface. But you can also spray and wipe. Okay, on a dry surface? For yeah, example? on a dry surface or use it as a traditional drying lubricant or aid where you just spray and wipe. And this will give you, uh, there's UV protection I think in there? There's UV protection, there's a bit of graphene and the graphene is there basically for water spot protection. It's not water spot proof but water spot protection. Yeah, that's one thing about ceramic coatings that we want to make sure people understand and I try to hammer down in my video so everyone understands is basically they're not magical force fields, right? They're not going to protect against stone chips. They're not going to protect against key jobs and crazy scratches. That's not what they're meant to do. They're meant to pr protect against, well, first of all, years of durability to help protect the coating against the UV rays and the UV damage, give you some slickness, increase a bit of gloss as well, although the main way to increase gloss is through machine polishing, right? Level that surface, get yeah. better light reflection. But it's going to give you a, a bit of boost in the gloss units as well, uh, give you the hydrophobic properties, so water beading and water sheeting, making the car a lot easier to wash also thanks to self-cleaning properties. Now, self-cleaning doesn't mean that the car cleans itself. No. It means that it's easier to wash and your vehicle is going to stay cleaner for longer. So you're going to see when you have a ceramic coated car, I find that if you're looking at it in a parking lot with a bunch of other vehicles, even if it's rained or it's a bit dirty, it always looks glossier and shinier compared to vehicles that don't have any protection on Exactly. Them. So I like that. Even dirty, they look a little bit shiny. A little bit shinier, exactly. And the Fiat that you might have seen already in this. The red one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's had all sorts of things put on it. It lives its life behind a tour bus. I live in a tour bus. It follows the tour bus religiously, three feet away, because uh, it's hooked on with a bar. But nonetheless, it gets everything that those wheels throw up at it. So and diesel oil. Diesel oil, um, you know, road tar, things like that. So it gets hammered. It's the worst possible condition you could put a vehicle in. Follow a transport truck three feet behind on the, on the highway in pouring rain. That's what it's doing. So for my uh, viewers' knowledge, the vehicle that was in the demo today, the, the, the yeah. Red Fiat, is it, does it have any protection on it? Uh, it's got all sorts of different protection on different panels. So you, you do uh, a lot a, of testing. It's a test bed. It's been polished a few times. Uh, but nonetheless, the protection that... The quick beads, ceramic gloss, it just makes it quick, easy. The ceramic coating is there as a base for these products to perform better. So how long can they expect uh, before they have to reapply something like the um, quick beads? How long would this last normally? Uh, if you're not washing your car, you can expect two to three months out of it. Okay, that's still pretty good. But most of us, myself included, 
when we're washing the car, we want to apply something like this. So basically every time you're washing it, you're just protecting it and making it better and better. So and better. what you're saying is you can use it every wash if you want. You to. can, yeah. So you're not overbuilding or over layering. No, exactly. Okay. No streaking. No, Perfect. no streaking, no, no things like that. And they're so the whole line is meant to be fun to use, safe, and without a lot of weird complications. So, you know, the the quick beads spray on, hose off. It's not 3.8 seconds. Yeah, somewhere between 30 seconds and two minutes, not a problem. It'll hose right off. So, so you try to work panel by panel, right? Panel by panel, a little spray. And when you're hosing it off, you want to start from the bottom of the panel and work your way up. Think of it as you're That's activating right. it with the water. You're not trying to rinse it off the car. So you would from work your, your way from down to up, you say, with your pressure washer, moving the water yes. upwards and then letting it yeah. slide down again. And no need, a pressure washer is great because actually a pressure washer saves water. But if you just have your regular garden hose, that will do it as well. Perfect. So what's the, the next one that we can use for maintenance? So ceramic gloss, this is actually Nick's favorite product. Uh, but ceramic gloss is a ceramic gloss enhancing detail spray. Okay. So it can be used dry on the panel. So uh, spray it on your towel, spray it on the panel, wipe it off. It can be used as a drying aid. Great protection. Lots of fun. Added gloss as the name suggests. And... Uh, it leaves ceramic protection behind. So what's the main difference you would say between quick beads and this ceramic gloss product? Ceramic gloss does not contain graphene. So those of you that are mentally allergic to graphene, this is for you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but not only that, it's uh, this particular one has a little more protection than the quick beads, but it's not water activated. The quick okay. beads, we have a lot of different ways of applying it. This is more your traditional spray wipe drying aid or gloss enhancement. So if they want something that might last a little longer, they would go for this? Yes, And exactly. if they want the ease of application of spray on, rinse off, then you have quick beads. Exactly. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. So next now, if we move on to the interior, we have the interior clean and protect. So what does this do? Let me guess. It, it cleans and protects the interior of the vehicle. But does it have UV protection, Ivan? A lot of people always want to know, do the products have UV protection? Yes. So wherever, basically in the whole DIY line, wherever UV protection is logical and where it should be, we have it. So uh, that being said, this is a great interior cleaner. It's not for the disaster interiors. It's not for the barn find interiors. But if you're maintaining your vehicle on a regular basis, great easy to use, wipe on, uh, you know, spray into your towel, wipe it on, and you're good. You don't have to rinse it off like an APC. It's leaving a bit of protection behind. No, it's not going to make things shiny. It's not going to, you know. So that OEM matte appearance factory look, yeah, basically. It's not going to be like the want. top of my head. So <laughs> no need to worry about it. Gives you a nice shine. And the protection isn't saying that we're putting a glossy finish on things. The protection is to make it easier to clean the next time. Perfect. So that's always the thing we have in mind is to make it easier to clean during the maintenance washes. Yeah. So the more often you do, like people ask me how often you wash your car. I wash my car twice weekly and I do the interior probably once every three weeks, roughly on that way. So it pretty much by keeping it regular and maintaining that, it makes things quicker and easier your next time. If you're waiting a full year before you wash your car inside and out, well, obviously you're going to have a lot more dirt and grime and all sorts of accumulated stuff, right? Yeah. And the interior of my car is a prime example of what you shouldn't do. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's a workhorse. Uh, I haven't had time to, to clean the interior. So. so now that we've cleaned and done this light protection, then there's something that I don't think I have seen yet in a product, but this one is called interior ceramic. What does it do? So it's interior protection, ceramic based for leathers, vinyls, plastics, cloth, and carpet. Okay. Spray on, level it off. You're good to go. UV protection? UV protection, obviously. And if, if it's ceramic, I'm guessing it's not necessarily because it's going to, well, it's going to protect against either liquid spills or dirt or what, what's, why did you add ceramic in there? Stain protection. Stain protection. Okay. So it basically, it encapsulates the fiber and stays on the fibers or on the leather. And we're not actually working with leather in cars these days. Unless you're driving a Rolls Royce, uh, you generally have vinyl coated leather and or the old King Ranch trucks. Uh, they were a basic leather. Yeah, they have basically this clear coat on top, like polyurethane based, a transparent yeah. layer, like the clear coat on your vehicle, basically. Yeah. So it's sitting on top of the leather. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like in the Fiat, the seats are red. I haven't seen a red cow yet. No. So that being said, we this provides protection against staining, against dirt accumulation. 
again, to make your regular cleaning easier and safer. So the, the main difference is then, so people don't get confused between the interior clean and protect and the ceramic this is once your vehicle is clean or you just bought a new car and you want to maintain that new look for longer, this is what you need. The interior clean protect is a cleaner that leaves a bit of protection behind. This is a lot of protection, no clean. Awesome. Fantastic. So we're uh, going now. We did the exterior, interior. One of the last detailed touch that I like to uh, do on a vehicle before you either deliver to a customer or for yourself before you drive it out is to have the tire dressing applied, right? We like that detailed look. Yeah. So you have a, well, it's called tire, tire dressing. dressing. So, or tire lotion, as we like to say. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's a very nice, easy to use product. No sling. The shine is adjustable, like a lot of them. Yeah. So one layer, you're going to get a nice dark sheen. Uh, if you want that glazed donut look, you can build it up. But it's going to give you a nice, clean-looking tire that's going to stay cleaner longer. Uh, no, it's not going to protect for months. It's, you know, a couple weeks at, at best. Super easy to apply, fun to use. It is silicone-based. Okay. Uh, Why not water-based in this case? Why did you guys choose? Well, it is water-based, but there's silicone in it. In it, okay. Yeah. And why the silicone? Better protection for tires, actually. Okay. So uh, silicone, there's a lot of different silicones on the market. Yeah. And some silicones get a very bad rap, deservedly. Mm -hmm. Others are great. And this is one of the ones that is great. It's It does what it's supposed to do. And it, if you have a Jeep or something like that, you can protect all your plastic trim with it as well. And let me put him on the spot here, because in the tire dressing, this is one of the areas you do want UV protection. Is there UV protection in this product? Yes, there is. Okay, and why, yeah. some people ask sometimes, why is UV important? Don't I already have UV inhibitors inside the rubber of my tires? Yes, you do. That's the brown stuff that comes out. Those are the UV inhibitors in your tire already. This just gives you additional protection. Okay. The so more protection we have, the better it is. You're replenishing. Yeah. And so people know also, sometimes they'll say, ah, oh, well, you said the uh, tire dressing wasn't a sling and it still slings. Preparation of the rubber is also key, right? If they have all that browning and blooming and it's disgusting with previous layers of another dressing. Yeah. So that would be good, right? The all clean, yeah, the all -clean. APC, or yeah. your, your favorite uh, rubber cleaner, but basically exactly. prep the rubber properly because your tire dressing is going to bond better to the rubber and hence it's going to have less of a tendency to sling all over the place, right? Exactly. And also, don't over apply it. Yeah. This is one product you need to be really cheap on. What's so your the, favorite way of applying this, by the way? I like to use a brush, actually. Okay. So uh, if you have you know a tire with a smooth side, which basically doesn't exist anymore, there's not yeah. many vehicles with a smooth sided tire. They all have letterings and graphics and... Yeah, and the little lines on them and all that. Yeah. So a nice flag tip nylon brush Spray a little bit into the brush and you can control it easy, get it around the wheel without getting it on the wheel. Just a, a nice easy way and you can work it into those little grooves and letters and Absolutely. all the fun stuff that they're putting on tires. Awesome. So a good tire dressing and oh, last but not least, also for finishing touches, we all want crystal clear glass and well, oh my God, guys, <laughs> literally, what's it called? Okay, I, uh, there we go. Crystal cleaner. Clear. So glass yeah. cleaner. So it's a glass cleaner. Uh, and a lot of people ask, why do you have a glass cleaner? You can use the rinseless as a glass cleaner. You can use all sorts of things as a glass cleaner. Yes, you can. But we wanted to have a dedicated glass cleaner that works exceptionally well. Uh, one of Nick's little uh, OCD things is glass. So he loves glass cleaners. So we had to have a glass cleaner in the line. But it just, it's a great glass cleaner. It does what it's supposed to do. It's not streaky. It's not hard to use. Again, ammonia free, hopefully. Ammonia free, so, so safe tint safe. Glass, yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to go spraying this on the glass and then trying to get a good... No, spray it onto your towel a little bit. Use one towel, flip the towel, or get another towel and clean your glass. It'd be simple, easy to use, inside and out, okay. in the home as well. Yes, the, for mirrors, chrome, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I like glass cleaners for that. And um, use appropriate glass cleaning towels. So microfiber either, regardless if they're low nap or if they have that waffle weave, but as long as they're those glass towels, because they're yeah. not going to lint as much. Exactly. And use clean towels, guys. Try to have dedicated glass towels. So a lot of people, if, even though they would have a quality glass cleaner like this, sometimes if they still get streaking, it's because of the towels. If you're not using the proper tools, well, the chemicals can't do their job. So clean towels is yeah. always something that, that you should have for your glass. Exactly. Now, there's one thing we didn't go over because it's not in the line yet, nope. but it's coming soon. We want to introduce it on Pan's channel. So never seen before. I like that. So never you guys, when you watch the videos, this is the kind of stuff I Never like. seen before. 
the gold standard. Looks like a polish or it is. something. Okay. So this is a polish that we've worked with our friends at Lake Country Manufacturing. Some so of the best polishing pads out there. So everybody knows Lake Country. Yep. They developed these pads with us and these are a waffle pad. So a waffle, yep. you can see that in there. Hopefully on screen it translates well and you have that hook and loop backing plates. Right. Yep. We have the center hole for cooling and alignment. And we have them in three, five and six inch. So these are coming from Lake Country. And the polish itself is a very easy to use polish. It's not gonna give you a lot of correction. So it's not a heavy cut compound. It's not a heavy cut compound. It's a good finishing polish. It's a good paint cleaner. Okay. We can look at it that way. So, so for a paint enhancement, for example? Yeah, gloss just enhancement. Wants to remove a bit of that lighter scratches, lighter swirls, give a bit more pop and gloss. Right. Okay. And you don't, you know, this is meant for the DIY line. And we're going to be having a video on our channel soon because we haven't introduced this anywhere yet. You know, Pan's channel will be the first. But the reason we went with a 5 inch, there's a lot of machines that are 5 inch, but there's one machine that most of you probably already have at home, and that's a DA sander. Yep. So a little palm DA sander, you can put this on and do your car with that. So uh, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a machine polisher? No, okay. exactly. So it's going to give you that gloss enhancement. If you're thinking of applying the ceramic coating to your car, by all means, this is a step you want to do. So that's a pure polish. There's no protection component. No in protection. There, right? Okay. Just a pure polish. Wipes off nice and easily. It's got a good working time. Again, Any dust that it produces no. or low dusting? No, no dusting? Low or no dusting. Low or no, okay. If you're getting dust from your polish, you're probably overworking it or mm -hmm. creating too much heat. Most polishes on the market today do not dust yeah. unless it's actually, it's not the polish that dusts, it's the person using it that causes the dust. They're overworking the product beyond the lubricating points of the oils that are exactly. inside there and it just starts dusting up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So Ivan, you mentioned something before, the rinseless wash guys, by the way, yes, of course, you're going to use it for the rinseless wash, 256 to 1 dilution, uh, but there's other ways that you can use, other stuff that you can do with this because you were yeah. talking about glass cleaning. So what other, so uh, other uses, versatility? Other uses for a rinseless wash, interior cleaning. So just have a bucket, one damp towel, one dry towel, wipe your interior down. If you're doing a weekly or every three week maintenance like Pan does, this is all you'll ever need on yeah. your interior. Uh, it, you're not going to get it dirty enough in that time span. The rinseless wash has another really interesting feature, especially for the pro detailers or someone, you know, doing their neighbors or their friend's car. That steering wheel is just covered in gunk. Mm -hmm. You can see that build up on the steering wheel. Yeah. You can try hitting it with an APC and a lot of times it doesn't really do anything. This actually does a better job than APCs on that particular case. The other advantage this has over an APC is simply safety. So the white lettering on the turn signal stock is not going to wipe it off. It's not going to damage the radio buttons. It's not going to damage anything like that. I like to use this, like I said, a bucket with a, a towel, a damp towel and a dry towel. And if I need to, I'll take the all clean, the APC, spray it on the towel and do that one little section that I need to do. So use the most, the, sorry, not the most, sorry, use the least invasive product first yeah. and then step up to the all clean if you need it. Instead of doing the opposite, starting with the most aggressive method <laughs> yeah. first and then you overshot it and then you're starting to do potential damage or leaving residue behind, always start with the least aggressive method first and then readjust according to what you're seeing as a result. Exactly. And I like a rinseless wash too, by the way. I have it always in a spray bottle that I can see on my shelf there. Yep. When I'm done washing the vehicle for the door jams, the door sills, I'll spray the rinseless wash, wipe those over gently so it helps to pick up, encapsulate any of that loose dirt that it's still on there and you're just finishing everything off as well. Uh, your uh, trunk sills and all that yep. kind of stuff, it works well for uh, if you have it in a spray bottle. Yeah, and finally, one last thing that a lot of people don't think of. Pan's got a pressure washer. And what what's your pressure on it's your Kranzler? It's a Kranzler 1122 TST. I set it at 1,100 PSI to wash cars because you don't want to exceed 2,000 PSI. No. Like these three, 4,000 PSI monster <laughs> gas-powered for no. washing paint, no. No. If you're farm equipment, yes. Yeah. Your car, no. no. You've got a lot of accumulated dirt on your vehicle. You don't want to start with the pressure washer because if you start with the pressure washer, what are you doing? You're taking that dirt, putting 1100 PSI behind it and scratching it along the surface till eventually the water gets underneath it. With the rinseless wash, you can spray the rinseless wash on, let it sit for a few minutes, let it dwell. It's going to encapsulate that dirt, provide a bit of lubrication between the dirt and the paint. Then you rinse it off. Sort of like what you're doing with a foam as well. Yep. But it actually does a little better job than foaming, not all foams. So there are like, you know, our incredible suds. There's uh, the built hammer foam. 
that actually gets in there and cleans very well. A lot of foams on the market are just that. They're a foam. They're not a cleaner. Yeah, they're and just there for lubricating factors. Yeah, basically. they're there for lubrication. They're there for looks, for fun. But yeah. at the same time, they're not getting behind and underneath that dirt. Uh, there are some foams, and this is a, a test, like Pan was alluding to before, that you can do, is actually spray the foam on the car, let it dwell, let it do what you want, then rinse it off, but let it air dry afterwards. And that's where you see that, wait a minute, the section that I just used a pressure washer on and the section that I used the foam and the pressure washer on, there's no difference. So unless you're getting that difference, you know that that foam isn't actually getting behind the dirt, yep. taking it off the vehicle and dragging it down. Unless again, you're using the snow foams that are made for exactly. cleaning and that we had a video on that showing the difference between just a pH neutral regular snow foam versus one like the built hammer or one yeah. like yours, for example, that would do some cleaning as well. So you can see that dirt being lifted off. But it's nice that Ivan would mention that pre-treat because that's what I call it on my videos. You've seen that, especially on the uh, washing tutorials that I did with my Porsche. You always see me use either an IK uh, pump sprayer or a Marilex pump sprayer filled with that rinseless wash solution and you're pre-treating the surface before you go ahead and rinse off with your pressure washer. That way, again, you're encapsulating all that loose dirt and debris and you're minimizing the chances of scratching and swirling the paint later on in the exactly. process. Yeah. And his Porsche, just so you know, he actually dries it. It Every actually day. gets dirty. Yeah. The last time I was here, he had a gravel road in front of his house. Yep. And that's just recently been paved. Yeah. Paved. It was a brand new construction. Right. So he's been driving on gravel roads with his beautiful Porsche for almost a year now. Uh, over a year. A year yeah, and over a year. Yeah. Yep. And, and no issues. It's all about uh, safe wash techniques. And if you use the, uh, the products and chemicals yeah. that do the job well, they actually can, can help the process as well. So uh, yeah, Ivan, is there anything else you wanted to say about, because I think we did pretty much the entire lineup? Yeah, we have a few additional things. We have some wash mitts. We have a wash sponge coming. Okay. Uh, we have some really interesting towels. We have different towels. Uh, anybody can get microfiber towels. Uh, we decided to look for little technological advancements in microfiber and our wash mitt as well. And let me uh, do a quick shameless plug for Ivan Why Not. He's a good friend. So you have a YouTube channel. It's called yes. the Detailers Business Academy. Yeah. So in a, like a one-liner, what is it about? So for those of you, who, for those of my viewers who haven't been to your channel, you should go subscribe to his channel. So the Detailers Business Academy, short videos, has nothing to do really with the detailing, the hands-on and all that. It's all how to become a better business owner in the detailing realm. So you give a lot of uh, tips and tricks for professionals out there that want to improve their, their business, right? Exactly. And, and I while he's here, by the way, I'm going to have him for another video later on. So you're yeah. going to check that later on, on my channel as well. We're going to use um, the, the Ivan's experience and his advice to, to help give back to the, uh, the detailing community. Exactly. And so. Nick McGurk also has his YouTube channel because yeah, he's a Pro. professional detailer. Yeah. Hawk Pro Detail. So his, uh, his channel has been sort of on hiatus a little bit for a little while. He was going through some personal issues. That's all taken care of. He's back on track. But uh, the Hawk Pro Detailing channel, Nick is really the detailer's detailer. So he deep dives. He's the rabbit hole. Uh, you know, if it can be done in one step, why can't I do it in 25 steps? Absolutely. So uh, he's a lot of fun. Great young guy. And, uh, you know, great partner for me as well. But just two, two good guys. Yeah, way. he's a he's a fun guy. So Hawk Pro Detail on YouTube as well. Check out his channel. You'll have a lot of fun there too. And thanks, by the way, you guys will have access again to that 10% discount on your orders for the DIY detail. All the info and the links in the description under the video. Yep. I'll drop links to their YouTube channels as well. I want to thank Ivan for uh, well, being here and discussing his entire line. I wish them much success. I like uh, giving back to brands that I believe in and especially people behind the brand. And Ivan is legit such a good person and somebody that has done, well, over four decades of goodness for the detailing community. He's a proud member of the IDA as well. Yes. So the International Detailers Association and uh, just doing good stuff. So thank you, my friend. I appreciate and it. And one other thing. Yeah. There's Canadians watching this. You can get the products at Carzilla. So yes. You, yeah. And in the US, also IDS Car Care. Yeah. I'll drop again all those links in the description. So guys, yeah, this entire lineup, by the way, if there's one specific product that you want to see featured or me going more into depth with in a future video, let me know. I'm curious. Drop a comment in the comment section. It's always like reading and replying to my viewers' comments. So guys, this is it for us. Thanks for being there. Thanks for watching. And in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one. See you later.